So in today's video, we are going to unravel that one single factor where all the successful brands put a lot of effort. Have you ever wondered why super brands like Anita Dongri and Sadhusati, they are becoming successful and uh, where there are a lot of fashion brands which are either heading towards a shutdown or not doing successfully. So in today's video, we are going to unravel that one single factor where all the successful brands put a lot of effort in understanding them, the client. Basically, a design process starts with the designer and it ends on the client. So it is nicely said that all is well that ends well. I have already made video on client profiling, but I still got requests from students to create a video which enables them to create a client board. So now let's see how to easily do a professional profiling of a client and what is its relevance in the design process. Now the process of finding the perfect customer for the product or service that you're offering is called professional profiling of a client. Now the purpose of design is to either create a want or fulfill an already existing want. So designers when they innovate on a design, it actually creates a want and sometimes they just give a solution to an already existing want. Now for a designer we can say client is a manifestation of a want. Designers try to understand what is hot with their customers, what drives them, what are the great trends or fads that they will buy. They focus intently on understanding who their customers are. Now benefits of doing a professional client segmentation. Now it helps in developing a brand philosophy, relevant product development, and it also helps in marketing and retail strategy. So basically, all the three pillars of creating a brand can be achieved by doing a professional segmentation of a client. Now, how to do it? It's a simple process of answering a sequence of questions that will help in client segmentation. Now, first of all, the step one is asking self-reflective questions examine your own internal thoughts and feelings regarding your client and reflect on it now how do you want to build your tribe uh, whom do you want to connect with and whom you do not want to connect with what are the kind of personalities you want to cater to uh, what kind of people you want to connect to what kind of beliefs they should be having what kind of lifestyle they should be having or what kind of age you want to cater to so these are a couple of self-reflective questions that should come to your head uh, before uh, getting onto a design project. Now, first of all, understand what is age. Now, there are different kinds of age. One is the chronological age, which is your age since birth, uh, your calendar age. Then you have your psychological age. That is how old one feels, how they act, and how they behave. It does not depend on their chronological health, but how psychologically they think is their age. Now social age. Social age is a person's roles and relationship according to their age in the, in the society. And together all three, all three of these impact on the lifestyle choices and consumer behavior. Also identifying the age range. Now let's say kids wear, where you have baby which is zero to two years, toddlers two to four, kids wear from 5 to 11 then you have junior market which is 12 to 16 young market which is 17 to 25 adult market which is 26 to 35 and mature market which goes from 35 to 55 and finally the old age range which is 56 to 100 years now the conclusion is the age range per segment increases as we grow old for example, junior market range is just four years, while mature market age is 20 years. Now, these are all assumptions based on different brand presentation. 
Now let's case study a designer Swati Kalsi who caters to a mature women client group and the client range is between 28 to 65. Similarly, a premium brand Fab India where the client age is 28 to 65. Then uh, another aspect that we need to understand is the marital status. Are they married, single, engaged? What is the kind of parenthood? Uh, are they parents or they, they don't have kids? So all those things are very important. And then you come to social status. Uh, are they employed, unemployed? What is the job status? Uh, also explaining the kind of job they do. Are they entrepreneurs? Are they creative jobs? Or are they doing traditional jobs? Then their social class, where you have upper class, which can be uh, categorized into super rich and rich. Then your upper middle class, lower middle class, working class, and lower class. Then location or geographical segmentation. Now, people with similar demographic and psychographic uh, characteristics tend to live nearby or people of similar class live in the same locality. Now, people living within the same geographical boundaries often exhibit similar buying patterns. This phenomena is further enforced by local weather, environment, and cultural differences. Now, understanding client personality, the most important part of segmenting a client. Where they hang out, what do they read, what do they watch, what places they dine out, their hobbies, their goals, their, their choices in food, health, what is the kind of belief they have in, in following health systems, where do they work, whom do they follow or appreciate or their style icons, any social work they are engaged into, extracurricular participation, uh, the participation is yoga, sports, athletics, uh, are they spiritual, what kind of religion they follow. So these kind of things uh, makes help us to understand a client personality. Now we are going to go to our infographics to understand all the aspects of client segmentation. The first one is demographic profiling, which says gender, age, income level, and marital status. Then you have geographic variable, which talks about the location. Then you have psychographic profiling, which talks about personality traits, value, attitude, interest, and lifestyle. Then you have behavioral variable. This division of market into groups according to their knowledge of and behavior towards a particular product. A lot of time you are designing a product but your client does not know about it. So what is the behavior of your client towards that product? And the last one is RFM, which is a mnemonic for recency, how recently did the customer purchase, frequency, how often do they purchase, monetary value, how much do they spend. Usually, fashion design students don't work on the RFM, it's done by the marketing team of a brand. But this infographics shows the overall aspects that designers do to segment their clientele. Now, difference between a fashion muse, a client, and a fashion avatar. Now, fashion muse is a person who is the source of inspiration for a creative artist or designer. A muse is also a representation of overall clientele. A muse has a certain unique style that inspires designers to create collection. Sometimes a muse are part of creating the collection itself. A fashion client is uh, can be defined as all the customers who buy your product. And uh, a couple of fashion news examples would be Maria Grazi Churi, uh, who is whose fashion news is her daughter, Yesel Ragini. Then you have Alessandro Michele, who is inspired by his mother, and Tom Ford, whose fashion news is American designer Halston. Then we have Karl Lagerfeld, whose news is Lily Rose Melody, Cuba de Wanche, Audrey Hepburn. Then you have John Galliano, who has Lady Amanda. Now, client avatar. 
To segment their client, designers create a detailed analysis of the personality and lifestyle of a client. They create an icon or figure to represent this segment which is called an avatar. Designers make lifestyle boards to depict this avatar. Complete lifestyle details are stuck on the board for referencing when a product is developed. A designer may work with different boards, each representing different client segment. Now, what is a client lifestyle board? Basically, it is an infographic visual collage that represents important lifestyle information about the client. Designers hang out with their customers, they take pictures and videos and interviews. They include all these in their lifestyle boards. These are, they are really trying to understand who their customers are. They are trying to get inside their heads to see what excites them, where they live, what drives them professionally and personally. Uh, a client board is made to have a broader picture of the client. Now let's look at one client board. Where, so this is an animated part where you can see uh, age, and gender, is female, income, profession, education, marital status, number of children, interest. So this is like a basic uh, format to create a client board. Let's look at more client boards designer has actually chosen one client which is like a muse and you know everything about her named Jennifer Dolan age 60 now this is a calendar year 60 but she her identity is not a 60 year old woman it would be more like 35 then she lives in modern occupation lecturer center St. Martin's our favorite shops Cos, Celine, Com de Vigasso, Gap, Balenciaga, Catherine Hamlet Perfumes, Jo Malone, English, Pierre and Presa, favorite holiday, destination, European cities, colors, pets, drinks, reads, bazaar, magazine. So if you really look at, you understand what is the kind of personality this woman has. So a designer is going deeper to understand a client uh, when you create a lifestyle board. Now this is about a young client uh, where uh, you have age, social status, pocket money, hobbies, geography status, Bangalore, occasion, personality and character, uh, preferred outfit, maxi and good, role model, shopping destination, brand choice. Then you have uh, uh, this woman of 41 year of uh, age and uh, she, her status is married, husband is Brian Menzi, so it's a real client, uh, children two maximum age eight and five uh, occupation co-owner combined household income so really look at the general info where they have really given a feel of feel of the personality that Alison has Alison as her husband Brian have been married for 17 years they have two kids live in the highest valley neighborhood of San Francisco CA where they own a restored townhouse in San Francisco Hayes Valley neighborhood. For the most part, the family walks or take public transportation as much as possible. In this case, they do need to drive. They roll out in their Lexus RS hybrid. So it is about everything about that client which you put inside the lifestyle board. Then you also have boards where you start putting visuals which connect to uh, the personality of the client where you are seeing a yoga picture, the kind of icons that the client follows, uh, she's a mother, this is the kind of office uh, she works in, the kind of places they dine out. Then there is another uh, board where you have put a full collage of where all they put. So now this is more of a visual collage and information about the customer profile. Another client profile, age group, profession, hobbies, prominent traits. So these are different ways uh, you can create a lifestyle board. This is another one. So key takeaways. A client board or a lifestyle board should cover the following details. It should have the gender, age, interest and hobbies, occupation, location, relevant behavior, example how and where they shop, how much they are willing to pay, etc. Average income, uh, level of education, 
and everything that you can get about that client. Now with that, we are going to finish our client chapter in Design Thinking with Gaurav Mandal. If you like the video, kindly subscribe for more such videos on design thinking. Thank you.